All right, Adam, uh, do you want to take over while I use the restroom very briefly? Yeah, I'll do a one for one swap with you. I can start first here. And uh, all right, and, and let's do, we'll it. do that. Go ahead. All right. So enjoy your break. As we're sitting here and, and kind of looking at the next few picks, we've got Charlotte, I believe, at 28. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, Denver is now in at 29. Uh, show, we got Charlotte here on the clock. The pick is in here. So we'll go with this one. Nick Smith Jr. to Charlotte. Okay. Interesting. So they went bigger with Brandon Miller earlier in the draft at number two, and now they go more of a backcourt floor spacer. I actually dig this for Charlotte, Nick Smith Jr. as an upside kind of play. And as you can see, the magic ticker appears without Vicini here. What, a, what an unbelievable thing to be able to have. Shout out, Producer Jacob. Thank you, sir. Uh, Smith, unbelievable, unbelievable upside to tap into as a score. Came into the season as a projected top 10 pick in a lot of different ways. Can really score the basketball. Elite shooter, 6'5 with a 6'8 wingspan. Can recover from behind when defending over the top of ball screens. He's got a long way to go as a defender, but those length tools that he can tap into are really, really important. Offensively, I think the combination of on-ball creation for himself and off-ball floor spacing is really valuable in an NBA system. Those great combo guards who make it and turn into the Jamal Murrays of the world are guys who add that playmaking feel. Smith doesn't seem to have that right now. It's part of the weakness in his game in this regard. Really thin, not a great athlete, doesn't generate a ton of rim pressure, but he can score. Really good runner in the mid-range area, comfortable creating his own both in the mid-range and to three, and I love the upside to be an off-ball shooter. This year at Arkansas was a tough one for Smith. He had some injuries and was in and out of the lineup as a result of that Uh he appeared healthy for kind of a small stretch of the season at the end of the year, had six games. And during that streak, he averaged 19 a game while shooting 40% from three. I was pleased with the way that Smith played during that period of time, but I'm curious, Sam, as I kind of pass the baton off to you here, Nick Smith to Charlotte at 27. They've got him and Brandon Miller. Now, what do you think about the fit and kind of the backcourt synergy between him and LaMelo ball? Yeah, look, if, if you're going to find a player that can play with LaMelo Ball, I would want it to either be like a power guard or I would want it to be a more defensively inclined player than what Nick Smith is. And we're not going to sit here and say that Scoot Henderson is some incredible defensive player, but I really like the synergy of Nick Smith with, or I really like the synergy of Scoot Henderson with LaMelo much more than what I like Nick Smith. Nick Smith to me is more of a sixth man for the Charlotte Hornets moving forward. And I don't really know that you're going to be able to play these two together defensively, frankly. Uh, Nick Smith has some of the worst defensive fundamentals that I've evaluated. He can improve those for sure. And they're fundamentals for a reason. You can learn on, you can learn them, you can improve them, but it was really tough to keep him on the court. Like in the NCAA tournament, they had to take him out of games because he just like couldn't figure out the mechanics. He's very hoppy. Like he's over aggressive. He gets very active feet. He'll over pursue. Like he just didn't close out. Well, he would jump on pump fakes. You could get by him, driving him like in a straight line. It, it just didn't work. Now the thing is that offensively Nick Smith has real touch and, can score the basketball and can be a good off ball scorer. Particularly what I was told about his pro day was that he came in and really knocked down a ton of shots, like really came in and looked great off the catch as a shooter in clutches pro day. So I don't love this at all. I think that you're using a bench guard here, but you know, Charlotte has had success in the draft, like taking guys like this at a reasonable level. I had Bryce McGowan's at like 22, 23, 24 on my board last year. I think that I would have Bryce ahead of Nick Smith, to be honest. So it was, it was tough. It was very, very tough. Very, very tough. 
I, I don't know. I'm not a not a huge fan of this one. Let's see here. Who do we who do we got? Um, Bryant Singleton says after Kai Jones, JT Thor, and James Booknight, I don't have faith in Charlotte's ability to develop draft prospects. Look. If you go back from the 2018 to the 2020 drafts, they were probably more successful than anybody in developing like late first, early second round picks. You have um, Cody Martin, you have Devontae Graham, you have Nick Richards, you have, I think I'm missing like two of them. You have Jalen McDaniels was in that range. Like they have hit on those guys more than just about anybody. Now the antithesis of what I said about Nick Smith spins even though you didn't hear was that in my opinion his defensive fundamentals are so bad that it's going to be really hard to play him with lamella ball the kind of coach that you would want him to go to to improve that is steve clifford yep. so you know it's maybe maybe it works yeah and it's and i tend works. i tend to believe nick smith has a chance to be adequate never good but like fine enough as a point of attack defender because if you play him against ones and have him chase over the top of ball screens he is really long and i think he gets reattached and uses his length to have rear view contests pretty effectively like i see a pathway for him to turn into a decent defender 